All right, hello, Blue. This is video two in my uh, Substance Painter uh, tutorial. Um, so now, with the first video, we've talked about everything that we would do to prep various models for Substance Painter. So now let's just actually paint one. So um, first of all, we've got this guy, um, which is the Special Forces Ninja hideout. And so we've got... Um, the one piece which goes on the outside, and then we've got the asteroid base that goes on the inside. So, all righty. Um, I'm not sure if this is all in one model right now. Nope, it's not. Um, Synth and or I have optimized this, and so um, what we're going to do is we're going to go into um, Unity FBX Exporter under Other which since if you're watching, you'll notice that I moved it. That popped up off the visible part of my screen. So um, I'm making a folder for this. Um, let's see here, where did I put this? Oh yeah, I have a million uh, windows open at the moment. Um, there we go. These files are giant, by the way. Um, so you're going to use gigs and gigs and gigs of space really fast. All right. So in your ship painting, um, uh, AI buildings, I guess. This is just on my own personal computer anyway. Um, so special forces ninja hideout. Um, so I'm going to export selected objects as a single FBX. I'm going to choose that location. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. All right, it's generated that. Now it's got some sort of wacky textures that it exported, and I don't want that. Um, one of the reasons why these are two separate pieces is because they, uh, they have very different materials and this really does not look like um, an asteroid underneath just because of that cell shaded style um, that we were using and um, be able to deal with that you now so all right so I'm going to show an explorer here we've got our meteor normal and texture and the special forces normal texture and emissive and I'm just going to delete those because those weren't anything real. All right, so now we've got um, this set up. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit Substance Painter um, New. Um, I was working on a spire ship. I wasn't happy with how that came out. Template, Unity 5, logarithmic. Yep. Um, hit Select. And then uh, you go to wherever it was you've got your FBX file. Um, I guess you could use a fair number of other formats. Um, you can probably use Maya MA files directly. I don't know. Um, anyway, not arts. AI building, special force ninja hideout, blah, 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 blah. Then import mesh normal maps and bake maps for other materials. So um, that means basically all the existing textures, if you created it and wanted us to use it, then bring it in. Um, if you forget some later, then you can import them to the project shelf, um, which I'll show you how to do in a second. But um, it's more of a pain when you're doing that. So it's uh, taking a minute to, to import. OK, so at this point now, we've got all this stuff here on the, the shelf. You might be seeing log or entitled or I don't know what all these those things are, but the shelf is the main thing you want to click to. Um, if you go into the project, these are the um, not the not the uh, meshes, but they're all of the um, uh, texture assets that are specific to this project and that are baked in. I'm going to go ahead and hit um, save, and so I'm going to put this underneath. Same place, AI Buildings, a Special Forces Ninja Hideout. Okay, so now that's saving. Um, I'll go ahead and show you how to um, bring in some other uh, texture. 
let's suppose that I want to bring in this thing for some reason. If I bring that in, it just drag it onto my project shelf, or you can hit File Import. Then it's saying, um, what is this? And um, basically, you can say, uh, you're going to want to say, this is a texture. And where does it go? You say current session, which just means while you have Substance Painter open into this project right now, have it open temporarily. That can be kind of handy if you've handmade a mask um, in um, Photoshop and you're then going to import the mask and then you're going to apply the mask into a layer and you don't really need to keep a second copy of the mask in your project shelf. You can do that. Um, you don't want to put it into shelf shelf because that's going to put it in every, it's going to make it available always forever from now on. Um, so you want to say project, name of your current project, you hit import, and then it for some reason does that. And then boom, we're back. And there's our spire material thing that is properly imported. I don't want it. So I'm going to just delete it. Um, well, I guess I can't delete it. Um, it's hmm, interesting. Never really uh, did anything like that before where I cared. Um, okay. Um, now, over here on the side, you're going to notice there's a texture set list, and that is referring to um, the individual materials in question. Now, um, these might be sub meshes or they might be separate meshes. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make that distinction. It doesn't care because this is just about texturing. We're not touching the actual mesh. So um, for all intents and purposes, a sub mesh and a mesh are the same thing. Um, so um, one of the things you'll notice also is you can click over here and it will show you um, different channels and you can show if you're uh if you want to i don't remember where it is now you can show like the background this is using ibl image-based lighting and so you'll notice it's got like a blue bit on the back side and kind of more brownish on the bottom so it's using kind of a neutral ibl lighting setup here um it's kind of a outdoorsy neutral and um just bear that in mind when you're uh looking at the the lighting on this. In uh, actual AI War, we're using more of a harshly shadowed single light from the side, and the color of the light is close to white, but varies a little bit depending on what planet you're on to give a little bit of a different feel. So um, it's never going to look exactly like it does in Substance Painter, partly also because the Unity shader and the Substance shader are slightly different as well. But they'll be close enough. Um, so, um, first of all, the very first thing you're pretty much always going to want to do is hit bake textures. And, um, then you're going to want to say bake all texture sets. And it's going to error out on a few because we don't have color data and a few other things in there. It doesn't matter. Um, if you want to go ahead and take, take out ID and thickness, you can do that. Um, I would leave ambient occlusion. I've not been clear if normal and world space normal actually do anything when they uh, don't have a higher res um, model to work from. But um, I, ID we're not using at all, and thickness is only uh, relevant for subsurface scattering, which we're not using. Um, actually, position, I'm not sure how that position, actually, thickness probably gets used. I'm going to put that back on because that gets used by subsurface surface scattering, but it probably also gets used by some of the smart materials. So we'll actually leave that on. Heck, just leave everything on. It doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, so we hit bake. Um, working at 2048 is fine. Um, it's going to go through that for each one of the texture sets. And you'll notice that these are, for one thing, creating new things that go in our project shelf. And then for another, it's putting new things. Um, the actual, um, it's shooting tons of rays and doing other things like that at the um, models from all angles. And so it's calculating um, 
crevices and things of that nature to calculate out the event occlusion maps, which you can see right there that it's making, and to calculate out you know the thickness maps for um, if there is any subsurface scattering and uh, you know that's something that's you know translucent basically that sort of thing. So um, it's done all this stuff. If we were to export this back out right now to Unity, um, we already would have some a little bit better of a um, of a looking um, result just because of like the AO and stuff that it's baked in. Um, we're not exporting the AO channel explicitly, but um, it is something that is getting mixed in with the diffuse channel in here. So it's really great because it kind of bakes things together in a really helpful way. Um, now, um, this is a lot like Photoshop with the layers here. Um, one of the things to note is that these layers have like they're like five dimensional things. So you've got the actual layer that has something on it that is drawn, or you know, I can paint on here if I want to. Um, and um, looks like you uh, mirrored the UVs on that. Um, so when I paint, you see that. Um, if I want to get, I may have to do a mesh unwrap on this to get the um, the look that I want, actually. Um, yeah. So actually, potentially more than I had thought um, may need to do. Oh, man, that's going to mess up everything. Um, cause that will mess up the underlying thing. I think we can get away without it. It doesn't matter. Um, we don't want to do any direct painting anyhow, so it's kind of irrelevant. Um, we can always use triplanar, uh, projection if we have to, um, because that just works on the quote unquote world space, um, of the substance painter scene that we're working on rather than using UV space. And so <clears throat> with triplanar stuff, it doesn't matter what you're, UVs underneath the hood are like. Um, and um, when it bakes back out, well, actually, that would be a, still a problem because we're not altering the underlying mesh. So, hmm. um, what you've done is obviously good practice, but uh, I mean, good, good, solid industry practice, but. Um, not helpful for the particular painting we're doing right now. So, <clears throat> like I said, these layers uh, in Photoshop are, are like Photoshop layers. Um, however, each one of these different things exists in each of the layers. So you've got the color, height, roughness, metallic, normal, plus whatever else we want to put, like emissive. So you can look and see that part of each layer. And there's also a mask, which can be applied to each layer. You can have folders which have more than one layer in it, and you can put masks on the folders and so on. So a lot of that's like Photoshop, except if, if you think about these little things as being kind of like channels when you look at a particular layer in Photoshop. So it's kind of the same deal. Um, there are two different types of layers. There's the direct uh, layers that you draw with. That is what it started with. I almost never use those, and you probably really shouldn't. Even if you want to directly draw on this, that's probably not the best way to do it. Then there are fill layers, which is probably what you'll all pretty much always use. So I created a new fill layer here. When I'm clicked on this, this is on the Special Forces Ninja hideout part, so this front part, not the meteor part. Down here under properties for the fill layer, it shows that I'm putting out color, height, rough, metal, normal map. Um, we're not actually going to use the height map anyway, but it doesn't matter. Um, so it'll just come out as nothing and it won't even export. So it, it doesn't doesn't make any difference. Um, the base color here, uh, right now it's uniform color of gray. What we can do is just under our project shelf, take our special forces diffuse and drag that on and boom, suddenly it has a texture. However, you'll notice that it looks weird. The reason is that the UV scale is at three does that by default. You can click the little pencil and then type one, hit enter. You can change the default to um, somewhere or other. 
It's under settings, I think. Yeah, default UV scale for materials. You can change that to one if you want. Um, I guess I will. I, it depends. A lot of times I like having it at three, but um, OK. Height, we're not doing anything with. Roughness, um, we're going to have to calculate that. Metallic, we're going to have to calculate that. Normal, um, you've created. And so we've got uh, special forces here. We do not properly have, and obviously that looks way too rough. That's fine. Um, we don't have an emissive channel, you'll notice. This right here, this texture set thing, these are all the textures that were calculated under the, the underlying maps that were calculated. And then here are the channels that we've got going on and what format they're in. I'm going to add another format here, which is going to be the emissive channel. Now suddenly we have emissive. However, you'll notice that this particular uh, layer is not including emissive. So I click emissive. Now we have that, and we just drag on this steel. And now it is emit, it's emitting on that layer. If you want to see just what's um, emitting, then you can check and see. All right, now the meteor. Um, excuse me. And so paint layer again. Uh, this time UV scale is already at one because I changed that setting. So main texture over to here. Um, meteor normal right there. And uh, there is no emissive. So um, you'll notice that the texture set is different for each. Uh, material in there, so you'll notice uh, there's no emissive map on this at all. And so, really, if I want to get rid of the height map, I can I can do that. We're going to want metallic and roughness, um, but yeah, so I can get rid of the height. Um, all right. So um, at this point. Let's take a look and start doing something further. Um, so we've got our, this is basically what the game was doing already. Um, and it's got some pretty shiny specularity on it. And the normals are a little on the strong side. It doesn't really matter. Um, <clears throat> if we want to down the normal strength, by the way, like on this ninja hideout, then one of the things you can do is you can switch to the normal channel. And then it shows how much how it shows what the uh, blend mode is there. So it's like normal map detail. I don't know exactly what that means, but um, and then you can down that some. So like sixty nine percent. I get whatever. It's just uh, up that a little. Seventy five percent. Fine. Um, and if I go back to the base color, you'll see it's blending in a normal way in 100. So all this is very familiar um, with how you know layers blend in Photoshop. But if you think of these other things as channels within the layer, each one of them has their own blending and their own um, basically opacity with it, own blending style and their own opacity, which can be um, tremendously useful. Okay, um, so now um, let's make this thing look more like dirt. And I'm not sure if this is going to work real well because of the way this has been textured, but we we shall see. Um, so I'm going to search in our materials. I'm going to see like see what I got. Rick's dirt, dirt clod. So I'm going to put this in here. This is going underneath your layer there. So really. Pretty much what's going to be coming through is the normal map. Oops, I put that on the wrong thing. Uh, went that on the meteor, so I need to be on this thing here. Okay, dirt clod. Here we go. So mostly it's just the normal map that's coming through. When I put this over top of it, now we're getting the color and the normal map. Um, if I want to turn off the color, I can do that. The uh, roughness and the metallic we want because that is what makes it look like actual dirt. Um, the physically based rendering PBR um, is based around that general premise. Now this is interesting because 
since we're not baking light maps, I, I'm, I'm just my head has been so in light maps that um, since we're not baking light maps, the repeated uh, um, UVs actually doesn't matter because the uh, patterns line up seamlessly anyhow. Now, usually um, you're probably going to want something closer to three, and it will automatically clamp those. By the way, uh, when you are dragging on a fill layer that isn't like something you directly painted. Um, and you can go ahead, uh, you can go ahead and drag stuff around there too and make it more or less um, one particular way. So, I mean, we're already starting to look more rocky. Um, now, obviously this is very, very brown, um, but we're just getting started. So now we've got, unfortunately, some of these don't preview very well for reasons that are unbeknownst to me. Um, so I drag this up here. All right, so now we've got dry ground here. And you can turn off the other layers if you want to see just what's going on there. And for some reason, this actually is just white. That's interesting. Um, but it's giving us some nice and interesting cracks here. Um, and you see the more we make that repeat, the less interesting that is. So definitely want to down this, um, ooh, not that far. Um, and one of the things you can do too, there's a bunch of, uh, you know, extra, things like with the luminosity that you can adjust um, in hopes of making that darker or whatnot or changing the contrast. Um, in this particular case, I think it's mainly contributing to the normal map. So I can take the normals and crank those up. Nope. Depth map. Hmm. Uh, you can also do things that are specific to the actual uh, texture in, in question and change things like crack size or whatever and that see we can't really see this very well right now so let's adjust this here so we've got crack size all right this is what we're working with um that makes sense to me um relief balance these particular um settings are going to be per material so if you've not worked with this particular material before, you're going to have no idea what it means. You just have to kind of play around with it and see what it does. Uh, that's one of the cool things about substances, which we can design ourselves as well, um, is that they're able to do that sort of thing. Um, and so like luminosity, yeah, this just doesn't make it. So you can adjust the age. Um, I wonder if I can go over. Sometimes they'll let you, sometimes they won't. Nope. All right, emboss. Yeah, so most of this doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Uh, oh, there we go. Color channel wasn't even being sent. No wonder. We weren't sending anything but the... All right, I'm taking this off. For some reason, this thing... So when we put this back on, it will be applying properly. But you'll see only the normal maps are highlighted. That's what was going on with this. So it's doing only the normal map. Now it's doing the color rough of this metal. I just didn't notice. Um, so we've got this going on now. That looks way better. Um, now, crack size, that's kind of cool. It's giving us like these giant cracks on the outside of this. Um, you can adjust like the saturation if you want to, you know, that doesn't tend to look very good, but um, 0 0.5 is what those things default to. Um, now the luminosity actually does something. Yeah. A little goes a long way with those. By the way, if you go down to like 0 0.46, then you can wind up with a pretty big difference. You can do um, basically full HSV shifts there with the U and everything else. Emboss, I don't know what this is. Maybe I should, but I sure don't. Hmm. Okay, um, and then the depth. It's probably talking about the height map only. Uh, and then the normals, you know, how strong are these? 
Um, all right, so now we can start turning back on the things underneath. And okay, so at this point, oh, I really like that crack and stuff, but um, this does not look right. So what we can do is we can say um, our blend mode, so like for the base color here, um, let's try, you'll recognize, these are all straight out of Photoshop, right? So like multiply, ooh, that actually looks really good, I guess. All right. A um, little on the dark side, though, so maybe um, linear burn is probably going to yeah, be crazy. So maybe like a hard light, um, very potato-like. Um, we start getting a little more asteroid-like if we take off the underlying layer, which was not something bad that you did. It just, um, I can just down the opacity on this too to help. Um, it wasn't anything wrong with it. It just was um, a different style. So, all right. What am I thinking? Uh, I wanted to go back to multiply and then just adjust the opacity here. Now, with the normal map itself, actually, no, not with the normal map. Let's think about the metallic. Mm hmm. There we go. Okay, so, yeah. So basically, that was a much more metallic type of uh, the the roughness is just weird on this. It's got a lot of specular uh, details that I just don't want. That doesn't feel like dirt to me. Um, granted, this feels like a clump of dirt, not like a rock. So we're gonna need a third layer. Um, Moon dirt, that's an intriguing. Okay, ooh, look at that, little rocks and everything. Um, all right, like that. Okay, now I don't want the color. Um, maybe I do want the color, but let's take the color down some. Dark, no. Dark is not going to do anything. Subtract. Yeah. That gives a very kind of dark body type of feel to it. Um, very non reflective, which makes sense to me for like a secret hideout. Um, uh, these little extra reflective rocks, unfortunately. You know, then don't get their due. But um, let's see what we've got in terms of rocks, lava rocks. Um, ooh, well, that's interesting too. Um, So with this, actually, um, all right, you know, this isn't world's greatest work of art here, but um, gets the job done. And it's pretty similar to what was originally there. And we can actually, at this point, bring back in what was originally there because um, it all kind of meshes together now. Um, and I do like having the originals underneath. This was, I picked this model because I never was real happy with that, that rock itself. Um, and all right, so now we got a ton of little detail in there. Um, uh, I'm on the lava rocks. I wonder 
So if it's not better to have more of one of these kind of colors or things. Look at that. That's got a lot of nice color banding to it as well. Wonder if whoa no. Overlay. Never can't predict what that does. Screen. Ha <laughs> ha. This is gonna be cool. Hmm. Well that's interesting. Didn't expect this. You know, I got that kind of weird green feel to it. That's intriguing. Um, if we go in here, we can probably take down the saturation, get rid of the green bedding. Maybe not. That green is coming further under. Um, we can pull color. Well, look at that. It's giving us quite a bit of uh, height mapping and stuff. If we put this down underneath, then all it will give us is the height map. Uh, especially if we turn off the color. Uh, it actually does stack, but it depends on what you've got chosen to stack. Um, lava rocks things make it look weird. Hard light, no, soft light. Vivid light's gonna look crazy for sure. Soft light, hello. Hmm. Might be able to increase the luminosity while it's on soft light. Here we go. It's one ugly potato. But it's looking rocky, which is good. Uh, saturation down a little bit. I think it's this one that is the biggest defender in terms of saturation being just a little on the high side. All right, so that feels a little more space rock to me. Okay, bear in, bear in mind different lightings and so forth. This will show up different ways. But I mean, now this looks like a space asteroid and it's got a lot of little details in there and we had no problems despite the repeated um, UVs. This was much more complicated than the vast majority of these are gonna be. I mean, that took 30 minutes, good grief. So, all right, now switching over to the Special Forces Ninja Hideout, which is actually this part. Um, so let's see here. First of all, we're gonna want to do I actually really like the smart material. Oh, that reminds me. Sorry. Let's do one thing with the meteor. Let's try. Um, let's try putting. Let's try putting really dark rocks on just part of it. I, I wanted to do that. Um, so let's say. Where am I going? Materials. Um, Burn volcano rock. Okay, Let's see what this does. Um, and predictably, color reference metal are not on for some reason. Cool. All right. Uh, I like this. This looks weird. Roughness. Yeah, that's better. Uh, oh boy, wrong way. I meant to go down on that. All right. So we've got this like super deep dark thing. Let's crank up the contrast some. Nice. Okay, so we've got this thing now. And now, we can come over to the masks here. We've got these smart masks that we can do a variety of things with. You'll notice in general what these are. Now, these add a ton of detail to this. So, what we can do is just drag this on here on the volcano rock. And um, you may get messed around a bit because the UVs on this particular mesh. This is one of the cases where the UVs are probably gonna bite us, which is not a crisis. 
Um, let's try just to see. Yeah. Say, okay, yes, yeah, so you can see where it's applying it, and it's not where you would expect. That's because the UVs are not um, the UVs are not non-overlapping. So let's try like a worn surface, I guess. How about cavity dust? Because that gives really strong in cavities and then not in the others. Our curvatures and everything are just not uh, calculated very correctly because of the lack of traditional UV unwrapping. So that's okay. No big thing. Um, it happens. Um, I have to say I'm suddenly in love with this dark rock because it looks really evil. <laughs> um, I wish. I tell you what. Um, we'll do a, a manual mask. So, uh, so we can add a white or a black mask. It doesn't matter. Um, we'll add a white mask. Sorry. No, I want to add a black mask so we don't see it at all. Now. Um, I wanted to show you this anyway. Now you've got two different things, properties, paint. This is for the mask. And also click over here and see the properties for the fill layer. That I... Now, so this is where you would want to start doing some painting. The color that you're painting is going to be in grayscale from, you know, white to that. And then you can paint with stencils and with all sorts of different things. Um, you can even do um particles so you can have like a thing that burns and that um gives you like scorch marks um it doesn't work as expected in this particular case because again uvs are not you know what you would expect so you wind up getting this in multiple places but i'm actually kind of happy with the results that i'm getting there it simulates a particle system and um paints with the result. So what I'm actually getting here, um, you, you can see, now that that's updated, you can see all the white bits there are where I burn painted. Instead of just painting with the brush, I painted with this thing. You can see it's got a variety of different particle effects that you can drop down on it. Um, if I wanted to um, you know, stamp something really specific on there, for whatever reason, um, you know, I could put um, something like this on there and adjust the size up and then say, you know, boom, there's that. That's actually kind of cool. Boy, this is kind of neat. This is actually, this is actually, uh, uh, that, it's too repetitive. Um, I did not think these UVs were going to play this nicely. All right, that's finished. We've got a nice scorch mark there, and the other scorch mark is underneath this. So, right now, the other scorch mark's up there. All right. Well, suddenly our rock is even more interesting. Hooray. Um, now, actually, is a chance where if we feel like it, we can click back over here. We can make this dramatically different in terms of like the roughness, for instance. Suddenly, suddenly this matters even more. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, Clear the mask to black, and then I'm going to paint like that. And now suddenly we've got this weirdo liquidy thing going on here. Uh, it's too uniform.
Broadway. Kind of neat looking, but no. Darn it. Oh, well. Um, I should have saved that, and I did not. No, oh, that's a shame. All righty. Uh, yeah, and you can turn off the uh, physics if you don't want those on. Um, and in this particular case, I'm going to turn the roughness back off so that it doesn't look so. Oopsies. So that it doesn't look so glaring. Um, these are back to looking like scorch marks that aren't so obvious. That's too obvious. Um, change the flow. Up the flow, down the opacity. Cool. Can't even tell very much that that's repeating. All right. So back to our ninja hideout here. Uh, hold on one moment. OK, now let's take a look at this uh, Special Forces Ninja hideout. One thing to remember is that if the normals are too harsh, that is something we can easily correct in Unity. Um, if really the only thing we care about with the normals is if they're too harsh relative to the other normals in the same texture set. So we don't care about them relative to the meteor, but we do care about them relative to the other stuff in this set. So we get that stuff going and we're good. All right. <clears throat> now, um, first thing is we need this to look properly metallic. And so um, let's go ahead. I'm going to use not, not. Let's go ahead and use just a regular material. Um, let's try aluminum. Um, put that underneath. And um, with our fill layer here, we're going to take off roughness metal. Uh, and we're just going to keep color normal in emission. And so it's not even passing it through. It just doesn't even have those other three channels. So it's bringing in the color, but that's it. Uh, well, and the normals. So this is what we get when we put in aluminum. Um, this is what we get when we get aluminum by itself. So really, the gray is kind of overwhelming things. Um, Let's try and lighten up this aluminum a bit here. Um, under advanced properties is where things are that are related to um, the specific material. So even though the color is not something you would think of as advanced, it's not part of a standard substance. So um, that's why it's there. Um, OK. So all right, so that's going to be a problem. Um, this one is, is just made of challenges in general. Um, all right. So no biggie. This actually is a good, uh, good time to show some of the other things we're going to do. So we're going to bring up Photoshop, um, the diffuse texture for this thing. Okay. Um, There's a couple of things here. One, I care more about some of this than I do other parts. Specifically, when it comes to all the colored bits, uh, actually, I'll do the opposite and go with the non-colored bits. Um, I care about the... Uh, I need to treat these as separate layers so we can blend them separately. That's where I'm headed with this. 
Um, go ahead, bring that in, those in, these in, that in. Yep, okay. Um, the unfortunate anti-aliasing edges there. Um, so what we will do is just copy instead, and then um, reverse select on this. Here, copy. Oh boy, that did not go where it's supposed to. So we will save this as um, I'm going to just, it's going to be in this one folder. So lit stuff. And then here, this, oopsies. Ah, what did I push? Um, this will down. Just so we don't have a seam on this part. And we will just call this base stuff. Just thinking I was going to want to do a mask in general. And this actually is the only mask I'm going to need to do. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and create a mask out of this, though. So we've got our lit stuff. So I'm going to um, fill a background layer with black and then just change that to white, all the foreground stuff. And so this would be my lit mask. And we'll be making use of that in Substance Painter in a bit. That is not Substance Painter. Um, okay, so now project shelf, lit stuff, lit mask based stuff, being texture, not a texture, texture, import to this project, import. Okay, and then it just shows these three. <gasps> Where'd all the rest go? Yeah, it filters that for some reason. You can click back to the project and you see it all again. Okay. Now, uh, I no longer want this fill layer quite the way that it is. It's actually fine except for the base color. So I'm going to pull in base stuff here instead of the base color. And so now we have no colorization on this and um, um, or, you know, no colorization for the, for the lit bits. Um, now for the normal base color layer, um i'm gonna say me lighten whoa not that um maybe a soft light not enough hard lights too much um maybe just hard light but eric so i want to have your patterns in there but i want to blend it with some actual metal and scratches and some other things of that nature Ah, uh, that's not good. Um, pass through. I don't know that. One. La 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 la. It's not sure if darkens really different than normal when we're talking about something like this. Um, this thing is so much darker in general that it's just. Uh, one of the unusual lights might do it. Pin or vivid. Maybe we'll just take the value. No, that's not a good idea at all. Just the color. Could be interesting. Hmm. 
That is interesting. Um, well, let us make another paint layer because I like that. Um, and now we have another paint layer. It's got too much stuff on it, though. We're going to turn all this off except for color. And we're going to drag our base stuff on here again. All right. What is it I'm really trying to capture from this? Um, it's that dark, those dark lines, right? I think that's what I'm actually after. It's kind of those panels here. I don't know where those are used. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. Delete all these bits, leave these lines. Let's see what we can do with this. Base lines. Because I want to have that detail in there. Uh, actually, I don't want to have some of this, though. Uh, it doesn't matter. Because we're going to be covering that up anyway. All right, so base lines. You are a texture. You come to my project. You are here. Oh, that was weird. Um, all right, fill layer two, base lines. Hey, all right. Ooh, nice. It's kind of interesting. Um, All right, this is all blacked out though. I'm gonna move this one up. So we got, should be red there. Hmm. Why is this so dark when it was red before? Hmm. That's kind of interesting, actually, that that turned out red. Um, raises the question, I'm not sure why that was red. <laughs> uh, alrighty. Well, let's try some sort of weird blending here. Uh, some sort of... No. Did that right. linear light? Nope. Hard light was better than that. Right. I think this could be interesting. We're retaining the spirit of the red there and Getting this going. All right. So now we've got our aluminum here. And of course, this still looks awful. Um, I want to take the normal map here and just need to get that down some more. This is just too much. I like the shaping that it gives it, but it's just it's too strong. OK. Um, now I've got our aluminum here, like the base color, and let's try messing with UV scale on this. There we go. Okay, so now we start getting actual aluminum looking things, textures on there. Um, roughness can play around with, um, yeah, for anywhere from whoa boy, holy cow. Um, so this feels a little more space station-y here, getting there. All right, now, um, let's use a smart layer here let's see what this does 
this creates something interesting. Um, good. All right. It's able to create good grunge in various places that I wanted. I mean, I didn't specifically choose these, obviously, but it it is places that make sense. So now this looks dirty, which is good. We'll get rid of the metal base in this because um, we don't need it. Um, Get rid of the dust too. Keep keep it on, keep it on. Um, all right, so now let's um, this roadside rubber one tends to be pretty cool. These apply a bunch of different things procedurally with uh, procedural masks on them, and uh, can yield some kind of weird good results. Now, obviously, we're not going to keep the rubber part, but um, it's just kind of a quick way to see what we have going on from our curves and stuff. Wow, that's some interesting, interesting gunk. All right. Um, I think I, oh, roadside rocks. That's not the roadside rubber. This is a, um, this is one I made myself. <laughs> um, all right. So. That I like. That I like. All right. This place is starting to look pretty beat up. All right. Um, let's have maybe one last material. Um, how about, I think, they think, well, there's some irons that are good. Um, iron, iron, uh, rugged iron. Yeah. We'll put that right here. Actually, I think that's one layer too high. Um, put it here. Okay. So we got rugged iron. That looks kind of neat. Obviously, this just blew out our um, our aluminum, which we don't want, but that's fine because I'm going to put on a smart mask. So let's try moss. See if that works. Um, it yields a pretty good result. Um, still a little much. So let's see here. So we click into this mask, which is a procedural mask, and then we can start um, uh, adjusting this. Um, back and forth. So that brings it up more, that brings it down more. Uh, let's do histogram contrast up a little bit. Ooh, disorder that up some. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty nice. Even for the UVs being set up um, a little bit strangely, um, that feels pretty nice. It's just kind of gunky there. Um, maybe, maybe a little bit too brown though. So we'll come in here because that looks more like a mistake than anything else, I think, honestly. Um, basic parameters, blah, 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 blah. They don't have a way to put um, the color directly. So that's fine. Let's just down the saturation ourselves, maybe. Um, ooh, that's actually even more interesting. Not what I was intending, but um, I like that. And I really like, you notice how the roughness and the amount of metallicness of this varies all over the place on it. So it really feels beat up. 
And some areas are kind of sparkly because they've got shiny bits that have been dinged and other bits are not. And um, if you click back in to um, click on the um, uh, smart mask and then click down into this piece here, um, it's pulling from the curvature, from the AO, and uh, world space normals and that sort of thing uh, that we baked way back at the start. So that's part of why we baked those at the start, a big part of why. Um, you can actually um, mess with some of the pieces of it. Um, you see like the top intensity and stuff for the world space normal. And it's got other things like scratches and all that. Look at these nice little scratches we got there going on. All righty. Um, uh, hold shift, middle mouse button. Okay, so obviously the thing you'll notice now is that this is completely, um, you know, where are the lights? And that's fine, left that to last. Uh, actually, we've got the lights, they're right here. They're on the topmost layer, they're emissive, and we can go to the emissive channel here and we will say this is replacing anything that's below it i think that's what that means if not then we'll just uh export that again separately later um oh that was the other thing is that there were some things that have a certain color um that i wanted to put in here i i, I knew there was something else i was forgetting um it's just this layer of um the lit stuff there, I want to have the colors from this. Don't want um, normal maps or emiss emission or anything. I mean, I guess we can have emission, but yeah, it's not going to make any difference. But um, point is, I wanted the actual colors from this. So now we have these coming through. Hooray. Um, and those are overriding all the stuff underneath it. Now, we have one other problem with this, which is that um, they're actually, uh, um, actually they're doing okay with the, nope, right there. You can see they're, um, they're getting hit with the patterns and stuff from below. So I think replace, whoopsies, definitely not replace. All righty. Um, Is a way to make it not disable? No. Normal. There's a way to make it not take the stuff from below. Um, Oh, that's why that's not part of that layer. That would explain a lot. Um, okay, yeah. So, uh, okay. This, this, okay. Um, I've changed something to pass through, and I don't remember what it was. The emissive layer. Oh, I changed it to replace. Yeah, that was probably not a good idea. All right. Base color. I'll go on and have this be emissive as well, and say, um, frankly, I want it to light in these colors. 
That's more like it. Alrighty. Um, now, if I didn't want the normal maps and so forth from here to be coming through, then I could actually turn on these normal maps, I believe, which I might not even have to. Um, it's a way of doing the layering that will exclude that. I can make a folder for all the other things, put in an inverse layer for this, make it so that all the other stuff applies to every part of the model except what I've layered. Um, I did the layering backwards, but um, I mean, I guess why not? Just for the sake of showing it, let's do it. It won't take but a second. All right, so we got a folder. Put all that stuff in there. This is non lit bits. Um, and it shows uh, what is coming out of there, but it's not. Um, it's not actually showing the, um, it doesn't have a mask, a global mask. So I'm gonna add a bitmap mask. And so view texture, it starts looking for, and so I'm gonna type lit mask. So I want that thing from over there. This is gonna be backwards. Um, and so, oh, nothing shows now, that's fine. Click on this, just hit invert, I think mask background, will that do it? Nope. Um, invert mask, there we go. Okay. So now you'll notice that these right here are squeaky clean. There's no little bumples on them whatsoever from our normal maps and so forth. Same deal here. This stuff is just pristinely non-bump map, non-tarnished in any way. They're nice little pretty lights and um, everything else is good to go. Um, interestingly, um, Yeah, I mean, I kind of like that. Um, but I don't like how um, I don't like how there is just absolute flatness here. I don't like that. So let's do something. Let's do add a fill layer. And then um, we will add. A bit mat mask, bit mask. There we go. This time it is correctly just getting that. Um, we're going to click into the actual thing here. We're going to turn off color, roughness, metallic. Uh, maybe. Let's let's leave everything but emissive on actually. And um, Since I changed my mind about this, now what I can do is I can go to material mode here. I can click this, and then I can just start messing with materials. So I can say like aluminum space station. Um, well, and that gives a weird result. Um, it's too reflective, but um, oh, it's the color is still coming through. Um, The uh, I thought this would give a good result. Look at that. That gives a really neat little result, actually. A little bit of extra detail on these things in the little windows there. So, hoorah. I could have made a folder, put the mask on that, and then done whatever in the folder, and that probably would have been cleaner. But I was thinking that I would just drag a material over instead, and then I kind of got cold feet on that. And so I decided to do the um add a material directly like i just did so this works out this actually looks like you know glass now. now that's not what this was supposed to be this is supposed to be aluminum um but with the way that it's got emission and with the metal and roughness here you know boom it's done so i've been working on this for an hour now um this is way longer than i would normally expect to spend on a model um of this sort because the the really hard work is already done. I'm just kind of PBRing it up a little bit here. Um you know, this is the original now I can't control this properly because my 
and got used to the other thing. Um, this is the original model, and then this is what it's turned into. So, you know, we go from a cell shaded, shaded look of one specific thing to a PBR look of the same thing. Um, we did lose some detailing in here, um, which I kind of regret. I liked that. Oh, you know what? Now that um, I think it's this layer. Yep, it's this one. Can make that. Um, normal now and up the opacity and now we haven't lost that detail yeah all right um and still not as apparent as it was in the other but we've got a lot of other detail in there now um, and once this thing starts glowing, it'll look more like what it was before, too. So um, I'm going to end this now um, on this tutorial. And the next one will be about how to actually uh, get this into Unity and what to do with it once it's there. Uh, I will say... Oh, my God. Uh, 340 megs worth of stuff here in this one Substance Painter file. So, I mean, this adds up pretty fast. Um, I'm not a fan of their new autosave thing that they just added, and I can't find out how to turn it off. Um, incidentally, the license 16 days remaining is because I'm on their monthly plan, and so it counts down every month until my next renewal. I don't know why it does that. That's a weird way to do it. It makes it seem like I'm on an evaluation version when I'm like part of their main subscription, but whatever. All right, thanks for watching, and I will have more um, in a minute.